exclusive. Welcome to B-Movies and Ebooks. I'm Craig Wade. And I'm Brian Allen Delaney. And today we got kind of a different episode because uh, we are hosting it live on Blab. So you can watch us live from here on out. What up? <laughs> <laughs> the Blab community is not excited. Yeah, and this is really going to transfer well like to the <laughs> iTunes stuff. <laughs> the audio audience. Um but yeah, we are looking at a film from last year, I believe, or was it this year? It's called The Circle. Uh, it was 2015. Uh, okay. It's called The Circle. It's a low-budget horror sci-fi. I wouldn't really call it horror. More of a... I think I'd call it even more than low-budget. A micro-budget? <laughs> I would say micro-budget. Yeah. I mean, this thing is tiny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, like, I'd be surprised if it wasn't made for more than just like paying for lunch for the people. Yeah. yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, it literally, we'll, we'll get into that though. It all kind of took place inside one room. Yeah, it was a bottle episode, but we'll get into that later. Uh, yeah, and so we're going to be looking at that, and we're also going to be looking at um, the upcoming, I believe it's still untitled book. It's the third book in the Roger Huntington saga, uh, written by Ryan C. Thomas. We're going to be getting him on the show in just a little bit. And um, whenever he comes in, we can ask him if it's uh, yeah. titled yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll figure out what's going on while he's here. And, <laughs> um, but no, it's a, um, it's kind of a weird leap going to blab. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you feel or no? I mean, kind of. I mean, we, we usually do it, you know, over video. And we see each other like this. This is our normal view. It's just now we have um, a sidebar with people talking to us. Um, yeah. And uh, uh, the occasional racial epitaph. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 People. Uh, we've only had a few people <laughs> call in. You know, whenever we were testing this, it we had like the most constructive like criticism or constructive call-ins and stuff. But now as of today, nothing against the people that called in, but nothing constructive, most mostly just racial slurs. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, but yeah, before we get started, what's new with you, Brian? Um, Oh, well, I have one piece of news that actually, uh, really made me sad. What? Uh, it, it's, a another Hollywood death. Hey. Um, Larry Drake. He died. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, not Dr. Giggles. I know Dr. Giggles, or you may know him as Durant from dark man. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's really sad. He's 66, which is not very old. And honestly, I'm not going to be mean or nothing, but he looked older than that. I'm just saying, <laughs> <laughs> well no i mean it was surprising you, to me that he was he was that young but yeah no, um, yeah he was always well we saw him a few times at frightmare yeah and he seemed like a really cool guy i mean seemed nice enough i mean we didn't hang out with him at frightmare he wasn't one no. of the ones that we did hang out with but he did seem kind of down to earth I talked to him briefly, like, hey, you're that guy from that thing. <laughs> <laughs> what thing? I don't know. <laughs> uh, L.A. Law? <laughs> <laughs> but he he didn't look the same, like, in person, you know? I don't know. What you... <laughs> well, I mean, it's not like he was a shapeshifter. <laughs> but, <laughs> but he didn't look, like, the same. I, I don't know how to put it. He was a lot taller than I would have expected, you know? Oh, yeah, he's a big guy. Yeah. The other one that kind of blew my mind at Frightmare was uh, Corbin Burnson. Oh, yeah, yeah. He From, was from um, The Dentist. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, Dr. Giggles <laughs> and the dentist were there. But no, oh. also from LA Law. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> were they the same guy? Um, but no, like he was huge. Do you remember that? Or that may not, not have been. No, the, I think that was the year I wasn't there. Yeah. He, dude, Corbin Burnson was like six foot six. Like he was freaking just massive. And the only merch that he had at his table were baseballs. He was signing baseballs, <laughs> like from like little or major league. <laughs> because he was in major league. Yeah. Like, which would have been gone great at like a sporting convention, but at a horror movie convention, it was just no, like, nobody wants baseball, like, huh? But, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so weird. <laughs> Did you but happen I'm... to check out um Pee Wee this week? I know you didn't because we spoke about it <laughs> off there. <laughs> Yeah, we talked about it last night, and I was asking you, <laughs> is it actually on Hulu or whatever or Netflix? Yeah. Well, I I mean, it's supposedly on Netflix. <laughs> I don't see it. No, I I saw it on a maybe it was like a preview, but Netflix doesn't do that crap, does it? Yeah, yeah. No, it. That's where I saw the preview. It was just like, oh, you should check this out based on your viewing recommendation or viewing habits, and so. I don't know, mm. but what I was going to say is it's getting surprisingly really, really good reviews. So that actually Why is it surprising? Me. Well, I mean, you figure it's been 20 years. He may have lost his touch and stuff, but yeah, no. Or it's taken him 20 years. He hadn't done much in the past 20 years. So maybe this is just like everything. Are you saying he like locked himself away in like his office writing the next draft of, of Pee Wee? <laughs> I'm not not saying that. <laughs> If Paul Rubens is listening, he can call in on Flav and talk to us. <laughs> you watch someone will just call in as Paul Rubens. Yeah, and somebody's going to make a racial fake, slurs. <laughs> they're going to make a fake Paul Ruben Twitter account. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, other than that, like I haven't really seen a whole lot of news this week other than that and the fact that the tick is coming back. What? The live action. Tick. Is it original cast? Um, I'm not 100% sure. Please um, tell me at least Patrick Warburton. Well, I, I don't think they'd even be in talks if it wasn't Patrick Warburton, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. And I think it's going to be on, like, Amazon Prime. <laughs> like, just an <laughs> odd thing. But, well, I mean, I guess it's better than, like, whenever they did the community, the like the last season of community, and it was on Yahoo Video. <laughs> Or something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst. Or like, uh, what was the one? Uh, Joe Dirt 2 that went to Crackle? Crackle? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you can find some good stuff on Crackle every once in a while. Oh, yeah. That, uh, what was it? Dead Rising? Like Watch Joe Tower? Dirt 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But other than that, um, I don't know. Not a whole lot going on as far as horror goes. Um, just more more things about ghostbusters uh. um there there was a I, I read somewhere that there was a lost uh lovecraft short story um that was found because apparently he was friends with houdini was he which i, I guess makes sense what a creepy Maybe. ass friendship <laughs> <laughs> but um he had commissioned him to write some stories and then there was one that was like lost but I don't know if he actually wrote it. It's very unclear. Um, if you go through like Lovecraft's letters, which I didn't do, some guy on Reddit did it for me. But he makes mentions of like you know getting commissions from Houdini, but then like basically just saying he he outlined a story and somebody else finished it. Oh, really? So so I don't know if it really counts as a lost Lovecraft story, but I don't know. I guess that's kind of up our alley news. Yeah, and it's book news. Yeah, <laughs> which we are fans of book news. Um, yeah. Speaking of which, on the last podcast uh, with you know all the authors and stuff, I happened to mention that Don Cano. Uh, what? No, no, nothing. Well, no. All I was going to say is that she reviewed or she uh, dropped a new book last week. It's called Bucket List, mm -hmm. and it's so dark. I didn't know that she could get much darker. Like she is extremely dark. See, I still haven't read that story from the Easter one. Oh, well, I I, I didn't. I don't know that she's I, on I that. Thought that's what, oh, I thought that's what you were talking about. No, we her. were talking about Matt Shaw's publishing, and I asked if he oh, did yeah, that yeah, sleep yeah, yeah. 
Um, That's right. And that is so jacked up. I mean, <laughs> it was the only book in a while that's kind of rubbed me like, oh my God. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> wow, they're, they're going there and that's what this is. Um, not that it's just extremely graphic. It, it's graphic as, as hell, but it's not just like the gr most graphic thing ever. It's just the content and the tone of it was just like, wow, I don't know that I've read anything that's jacked up in a while. Um, she seemed pretty happy that you had that reaction on Facebook, though. <laughs> she did? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she... Uh, in fact, I, I friended her after that. and uh, But yeah, she had did that and... Um, Anyway, what all I was going to say is I'm halfway through bucket list, which I should have just knocked out in one sitting because it's only like 30 pages. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, I would so far, I would recommend that as my pick of the week, which is something that we don't have We've never done. <laughs> but anyway, um, but yeah, so <laughs> Brian, what's your pick of the week? Just put you on the spot. <laughs> Um, I, I guess, uh, the death of Larry Drake. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. Uh, but that, I didn't uh, have any other news. <laughs> <laughs> um, also Baskin. I don't know that, uh, we talked about it a little bit on the show. Do you remember talking about Baskin, the Turkish horror film? Uh, yeah, vaguely. They keep dropping new clips. It's like these, uh, it kind of looks like cops are going to go find out what's going on in some case, you know, and then they're dropped into some sort of otherworldly underworld type thing. Yeah, 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 and yeah. It yeah. just the, crazy jacked up. Yeah, I remember. I really wanted to see that. I didn't recognize the name. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't, hold on. <laughs> so, so peaches just joined uh -huh. right and was watching for a while and i was like what up peach on the sidebar and he just immediately left <laughs> <laughs> oh he's back, wait, wait, he's back. <laughs> uh, but all i was gonna say is that baskin was like there's new clips dropping and stuff of it and it's freaking uh -huh. dude i want to see that film like so bad it looks really really good i don't know that it's hit vod platforms or anything but i i believe that it's out in turkey so any of our Turkish audience, let us know at B and E pod how the back or how Baskin is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen. No, we don't really have much of a Turkish audience or no. an audience. Yeah. There's that. But we actually have some pretty cool news about our network this week. Oh, right? yeah. You want to jump into that? Um, well, in the, the coming weeks, we may have may, I'm emphasizing that, not one, but two more shows. Two more shows? Two more. Maybe. Okay. Um, one of them will be a brand new show that I'm not going to give any details about. No, but I'm And then one of them is an existing show that's brand new that might migrate to the network that I'm also not going to give any details about. Yeah, and I can go ahead and say that the existing show, big fan. And the yeah. new show will be unlike anything else on our network. I can pretty I'm, much I'm really say. excited to see where that goes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, knowing who's going to host it, um, it could, well, it's going to be entertaining either way, um, but it could be, you know, end up being like really, really professional or end up getting us kicked off of iTunes. <laughs> One of those two things will happen. <laughs> or maybe it's just super professional and it still gets us kicked off iTunes. Maybe. I hope maybe. Not. But yeah, it will be definitely the the uh hallmark of B and E network testing our freedom of speech. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, but yeah, I'm really, really excited about that. Uh so anyway. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean <laughs> I don't really have much else to add. Do you want to jump into any of that, or um, are are you talking about reviews or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess. All right. <laughs> well, does it have a running time of how long this has been? No, but my garage band does. It's been four hundred and twenty nine bars. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like ten minutes. 
Yeah. Right? Because I'm, ass- I'm assuming you left it in 4 4. Oh, I left it at 4 4 120. So, <laughs> anyway, all you music musicians listening, that might make sense or not. So, Chris, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's no way he's still listening. No, he's probably not. <laughs> well, he said he's cleaning and he, he's probably just got it on the background and not even listening at all. Yep. Yeah, probably. This makes for good radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess we will be right back with our interview with uh, Ryan C. Thomas. And we're going to be talking about the upcoming volume three in the Roger Huntington saga. We'll be right back. And we're back with Ryan C. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, buddy? Looking good. Looking yeah. good. <laughs> he got a haircut since last time we saw him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's less red than it was before. <laughs> God, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's enough of that. <laughs> but what's up, buddy? Not much. How's it going? No, good. Good. <laughs> good. <laughs> I'm just laughing because of the fact that we've been talking. <laughs> and then now that we go online, yeah, we have to pretend. pretend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, I haven't heard from you in a while. I know. <laughs> How's it going? Um, but yeah. So, okay. First off, uh, you let us check out uh, an advanced copy. Um, not quite a final draft, but what I assume is pretty much most of the way there. Uh, volume three of uh, Roger Huntington saga. Um, but I'm not sure what it's called. Do you know the title yet? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought about letting some of the beta readers uh, maybe come up with one, but then I, yeah, you know, I've got friends that they would want money. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want three cents of every book sale. I wrote the title. So then I, like I used to do that <clears throat> in my band. With, uh, I don't know, songs and stuff. People be like, hey, do I get a cut from that one line that I helped you write? It's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, you... now it's like, yeah. So, anyway, I said, I, I, I have no title is my long-winded answer, though. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, it's all good. It's Born to Bleed 2 or The Summer I Died 3. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I want a cut for those super <laughs> original titles that I just gave. <laughs> all right, three cents. Three cents. <laughs> That's but... a pretty good deal. <laughs> but yeah, so for people that haven't uh, checked out The Summer I Died or Born to Bleed, um, whereas uh, Born to Bleed, I think you really wouldn't have to read The Summer I Died. This one, those would be requisite reading. Is that correct? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I can't remember what's in the book at this point honest with you um, <laughs> i would say definitely have to read born to bleed yeah i don't know if you'd have to read summer i died unless you want to know the background of tooth and skinny man really yeah i, I think there's enough in it to where you wouldn't be lost necessarily but you would get more out of it if you went back and read one and two well i, I think two uh born to bleed is probably more recommended you know because it sets up the whole premise of what this book is doing in the first place yeah so but um i'd say summer i died you'd get a lot more out of the story if you read it but Mm. um i don't know if you'd have to necessarily read it first it could be like a flashback i don't know yeah Yeah, you could even go back and read it after I don't know. I guess read it first. I, the only reason <laughs> might, I, I might not tell someone to read it first is because it's it's my gore fest novel, and some mm-hmm. people aren't into that. So, yeah, it's definitely it, it's become kind of a splatterpunk type classic or yeah. just extreme horror classic. I don't really know that it's exactly splatterpunk, but it's definitely extreme horror. But I don't know. I mean, like the summer I died was. You know, we we reviewed. Uh, we can't remember what episode it was. Oh, no, I wrote them down. Oh, did you? Okay. Summer I died was fourteen, so pretty early on, mm-hmm. and then um, Born to Bleed was twenty three. Oh, okay, and so now we're at episode fifty one with volume three. 
So that means when roughly episode 75, 76, we, we get to the volume four, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Start <laughs> writing. Yeah, I'm trying to do Hisser's three right now. I have a couple chapters done. And uh, again, with the baby and everything, it's just, it's tough. Heart. That's, I, I, I got to get that stupid Hisser's three done. I want it out of my life. I want to finish that trilogy and never look at it again. Um, and, and then just... Like I probably said before, focus on Roger for a while. Yeah. And so how how long do you think? I mean, obviously, right now it's probably up to reception, book sales, and your want. But how long do you think that the Roger Huntington saga will be? Uh, I don't know. Just as long as I keep having fun writing him. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> until, I grow, until I grow tired of it, which hopefully doesn't happen, because he right now he's the most enjoyable, or that series is the most enjoyable thing that I write. So. Yeah, it's. I mean, if you've only read the summer I died, do not let that deter you from the rest. <laughs> Are well, you no, no, no. I mean, assuming you know, that they're not going to like it. <laughs> no, 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 no. If you've only read the summer I died and didn't like it, maybe I should preface it with that. Um, <laughs> Don't let that deter you from checking out the rest of it. Um, I dug the shit out of the summer I died, um, but it's totally not at all the same. And that's not a bad thing because I would absolutely hate it if it was like three books in a row of the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but horribly boring. Just keep doing that. <laughs> yeah, like oh no, <laughs> summer I died three back to the basement. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Even skinnier. <laughs> so, so if anybody's listened to the old episode, um, you know, back at episode fourteen, I didn't like Summer I Died, right? But I really liked uh, Born to Bleed, right? Um, and I feel like this one, and I'm not just saying this because you're on the show, because you know we wouldn't do that, <laughs> right? Because yeah. I told you like straight to your face last time that I didn't like uh, yeah. Summer I Died. <laughs> mean to me, I like it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> but I kind of feel like this, the third chapter at least, has at least somewhat for me redeemed the first one. I feel like now it's made sense. You know what I mean? Um, like it, it's been a good character arc, you know? Mm -hmm. And so now it feels like all of the, at the time, what was just like to me, just senseless violence for violence sake now has a story point to it, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I, I don't even know if that's what I was trying to do. I mean, I, I was, but uh, <laughs> it kind of just comes to me as I'm writing it. Like, I think he needs to do this now. And I, you know, mm -hmm. he go here. And I, I, you know, we talked about this last time with my comic book uh, fascination. I, I, I always wanted him to be a hero somehow. So ho hopefully the arc is working, but, you know. Yeah. Um. Right now, I'm not going to... Uh, if you if you read the other one, we talked about that. Like you said, it was sort of like, um, you know, he's a low level mutant almost, right? <laughs> and and this this one, it's almost like they're getting the X Men together. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just left. Oh, screw that! I don't want to read that crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was going to make a bad joke. No, go for it. No, no, no. It, it's cool. No, now you're obligated. You have to do. Uh, there was no punchline to that joke. So, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it really, really felt more comic booky than even Born to Bleed. Because at the end of Born to Bleed, you know, Born to Bleed, it, it kind of was noirish. And then at the end, you're like, holy shit, this is going into comic book territory. And mm -hmm. in a good way, because I'm not a fan of comic books. Um, it is what it is. Uh, I I don't like superheroes. That's my thing. So like books like Preacher and stuff like that, of course I like, but but typical superheroes I don't like. But what I was going to say is we're going into comic book territory, but in a good way, a very, very good way for a non-comic book reader fan. It's just extremely pulpy, not mm -hmm. to the point of campy. Um, I don't really feel that it's campy. Um, no. And, but... 
I really, really, I'm, I'll go ahead and say on page three or wherever you start meeting uh, Catherine and Craig, I was like, oh no, I, I don't, I don't know that I'm going to like these people. And by the end, I loved them. Absolutely loved them. I thought it was a great right. addition to. Good. I was really, I'm glad to hear you say that because that is a big thing I'm worried about, you know, trying to replace Tooth, so mm -hmm. to speak, not replace him, but bring in some some other characters for Roger to, uh, you know, banter with, bounce ideas off of, because in Board to Bleed, he's mm -hmm. alone, you know, um, and I was, I'm really worried that people are going to not like Katrin and Craig, but so I'm glad. No, I think it that. worked. I think it worked really well, because like you said, or like we just said just a second ago, three books of the exact same thing is, is going to be, you know, maybe boring, you know, if it's just him alone doing the same thing, um, you know, and it, you have these new characters, but they don't feel like cousin Oliver's or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they make sense in the context of the story and right. they're, you know, fun characters. So. Yeah. So go ahead and scratch out Roger Huntington's cousin out of the fourth. <laughs> <laughs> what about, uh, does he need a dog named Tiger? Or <laughs> oh god and then uh, just one day the dog won't be there anymore and you'll just be like what dog? We had a dog. you know a, another thing that actually like impressed me about this is it seemed like okay a lot of people you can kind of tell whenever they're writing about places that they haven't experienced but i it might be different for people that live in germany but from an outsider it really really seemed like you kind of had captured the whole german vibe on this thing it, you knew a lot about it. it i don't know if it was research or because you went there no i've been to berlin numerous oh, okay times. well that's... um I, i've been there for work for doing travel articles in fact so i the reason i said it in east berlin was the last time i was there doing a travel travel article i was in east berlin uh doing you know talking about sort of the uh the rebirth that was going on this was, this was years ago so i'm sure it's you know completely gentrified right now but at the time that I was there, it was really exciting because uh, it's just suddenly it, it was, it's, it's so weird to see these like communist block housing with neon lights all over it, you know, Starbucks signs, but just on a concrete building with bullet holes. I and mean, it was really awesome to get that experience. And I love Berlin. I've always said if there's another city that I could uh, that I could move to and and live in in Europe, especially it would be Berlin. It's just it's so beautiful. The people are super nice. Of course, the history is pretty amazing you know i love world war ii stuff they're a little <laughs> it's weird over there because they they have a lot of tourist attractions dedicated to it and at the same time they don't yeah. talk about it you know or, or at least the older generation the younger generation seems to not be uh so turned off by it but it's, so it's weird depending on who you talk to whether or not they'll even talk about it or talk about it in a way that's sort of apologetic or sort of touristy or sort of they just don't want to don't want to deal with it it's it's a very interesting vibe but the people that everyone i've ever met there has been super nice yeah uh, i mean that's awesome i don't know we had a german foreign exchange student in our band at one point <laughs> <laughs> and um it was he was kind of the same way like it was, it was just like this horrible part of history that he was like you know i mean no one wants to talk about it <laughs> Like, yeah. not really him, but other people over there he was telling us about. And I don't remember verbatim because it's been 18 years ago or something like that. <laughs> but, but yeah. yeah. Well, a lot oh, go of, ahead. Oh, I was going to say uh, a lot of the stuff in that third book that you read, the restaurant where they go to in the beginning. And I don't think this is a spoiler because it's like chapter mm -hmm. one, right? And they go and they eat the pigeon mm -hmm. and the and stuff i actually went to that restaurant and had pigeon and skate so <laughs> a lot of the stuff the flea market that they go to i've been to that flea market um so all that stuff is real and it exists yeah so hopefully hopefully it comes across as real yeah definitely i you could feel like you know you could definitely picture the city and and everything uh very vividly in this one actually actually not like you couldn't in the other ones, but, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, no, I really, really, I thought it was really, really cool. Um, Brian, you looked like you were going to say something, were you? 
Oh, uh, well, I mean, I didn't want to stop you from your <laughs> travel you know, talk. Yeah, your very eloquent, you know, <laughs> talk about Berlin there. Um, no, I was just saying, like, I, I agree. It did kind of feel like you were there. You know, I've never been to Germany or whatever, but, it, you know, there was just enough detail to really pull everything together, but not, you know, get overly flowery. But what I was going to say um, was you know, just back to the character of Roger Huntington. I think we talked about this last time you were on, but um, it, it, he really feels almost autobiographical, <laughs> you know, because in a way, because, you know, I, I just thought about this again because you said you were in that restaurant, you know, eating that same stuff. And it's just like all the little pop culture references and especially comic book references that he makes are not like your average normal person's comic book knowledge you know <laughs> and he'll just drop random um you know little references to things that no one else knows what he's talking about and it's like you can tell you're not doing just a quick wikipedia search of superheroes or anything like that yeah i do no research when i write that's why things are so messy <laughs> <laughs> that's why you need a hell of an editor no um yeah <laughs> no but yeah, definitely there's some some bit of myself uh, in terms of those references. Um, I don't remember what comic book stuff I put in it, but I'm sure it's stuff that I either have or want to collect, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Yeah. I was looking to see if I could... I, I highlight some of them. Oh, yeah, like there was a really obscure reference to um, the voting for a new headmaster of the Jean Grey School of Mutants. And I'm like, that's like one story arc that happened like, yeah. like a year or two ago. It's like, right, yeah. no one's going to get that, you know, unless they were like really into comics at the time. And I just felt that that's yeah. like really endearing because to me, it, it spoke as like, this is a real person, you know, um, as, as opposed to just like, uh, you know, I wanted to make a character that was a comic book nerd and you just did like a bunch of research. This felt like you know, this is the stuff you were into at the time or whatnot. Yeah. If, if I could spin my computer around, my wall right here is um, covered in comic books that I've <laughs> so I show you part of my collection. I got my preacher number one and my Batman number one and all that stuff's hanging up right here. So Let's see. <laughs> yeah. I think on, on the flip side of that, uh, whenever you don't like when a, a it's very, very clear that someone can't relate and they've looked it up. It comes across. I don't know if you saw the cabin fever remake, but they had <laughs> a gamer in that. Yeah, no, I haven't seen it. I love the first one. I don't even, want uh, well, to I mean, no, we, we watched it for this and it was, I'm not going to say unnecessary. Yeah. Let's say unnecessary. Yeah. Well, I was going to just say total ass, but <laughs> it, it has the same script. But they removed right, any, right. like they scrubbed anything on PC and then replaced. Uh, I forget the guy's name, but anyway, Bert or something. Yeah, Bert. Bert. Yeah. They replaced him with like his character was now like a gamer and he was just like, I'm going to go noob tube some people, right? <laughs> and just like, <laughs> what, what's going on? But yeah. yeah um, so yeah, it definitely feels like um, this character is like brian said and you said you know it, it's it's home um and no i mean i really really think that it's interesting that you're taking uh some risks uh at i don't want to say alienation but <laughs> Oh, I feel like it's going to alienate. A yeah, lot of but I think that it's ballsy no. as hell to do that, and I think that Born to Bleed was ballsy as hell to veer so far from where it started. But mm. that's great. I mean, I I feel like that's the only way that you're going to get the you're going to get people more invested versus just like, oh, let's see what kind of gross crap he can write this time. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like and and. Even though I love the summer I died, I definitely think that uh, Born to Bleed was a stronger novel, and this is mm -hmm. on par, if not stronger, than Born to Bleed, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't. Awesome. Yeah, I I agree. 
like I liked this a lot. So cool. That makes me feel good. I was a little worried about some of the. Uh... I don't know. I guess there's some cliche. This story I started to write many, many years ago. And it, I mean, it took me, I guess it's almost taken me two years at this point to finish the book. And in that time, so many other books with similar sort of villains, I guess, have come out. I, I don't want to like necessarily spoil what's going on mm -hmm. in the book, but I was really worried that uh, it wasn't going to be sort of original enough, you know, so to take it to a place that you know, to take Roger even further away from Summer I Died and Born to Bleed and then struggle with a, a type of uh, plot which may feel now in 2016 overdone, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's something I was definitely, I'm, I'm still worried about that. Well, so, <laughs> that's good to hear you guys. Well, <laughs> I think that those are, that's more of like an author worry type thing than the reader actually feeling that because honestly it's hard to be there all the plots of, not saying that this plot is something else but all the plots have been explored at this point you know i mean shit unless you put them on mars <laughs> yeah, i was about to say you know the the last plot was leprechaun in space that was the last one <laughs> that's the last one yeah. I, feel, I still love uh, Jason oh, stuff. Jason X. I love Jason X. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's actually one of the strongest Friday the 13th, in my opinion. <laughs> it's great. I think after, uh, probably after five, was it five? I'm trying to think of what, when was Tommy old? Six? Yeah. It went, it, and then after that, like seven, eight, and nine, or I don't even remember them. They're so bad. I know it was one with the girl who had psychic powers and one where. The little Jason demon. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so when they did Jason X, I was like, it's all right. This is good. This is back to just being Jason. We're in a spaceship or whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I didn't hate Freddy versus Jason either. It's not good. Yeah, I didn't either. It, it's not no. good. <laughs> yeah, it, it had its moments. The water thing <laughs> killed it. But other than that, I, I thought it was fun. <laughs> huh. <laughs> so Roger <Yeah>. Hunton. <laughs> <laughs> um but no i mean like i i really really think that it's you know it's it's ballsy to do that it's such a really just cool story um it actually kind of reminded me more of like a comic book meets true detective season one kind of vibe this time than anything else and that's a really cool area to be mm -hmm. in I mean, because we keep saying like comic booky, but it's not over the top. It's all it's very very subtle. You know, no nobody has like super strength or flight or anything like that. Um, <laughs> you, you know, uh, but it's like I, I hope we're not turning like horror fans Beyond. off by saying you know comic book every five minutes. Yeah. No, I mean I think. There's there's some gore. I put some gore in there. I tried to uh, like support. Yeah, because this one was definitely not as I would say definitely not as gory as Summer I Died, and I would say Born to Bleed was probably more maybe maybe I don't know. I don't know. But it was more overt, I think, with the sort of uh, the dinner yeah. table scene in Born to Bleed, whereas this just kind of. It has gore. It's almost in the background. Yeah. It almost becomes. I wanted it to be more about Roger's arc as a uh, sort of vigilante who has accepted his role. Mm -hmm. now. So. There, there was one scene in particular, though. I think it was like the first actual gore scene where I was just like, <laughs> you know, it's like, which is going to translate well to to the radio <laughs> listeners, but it's just like I was just. I had to stop for a second because I was just like, what just happened? Yeah. But... You're really good at uh, <laughs> making people comfortable with characters and then totally, totally reducing them to nothing, but just <laughs> shit and, and blood, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> like a, <laughs> it's a, it's it's a, a gift. Really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, comic booky. Maybe I, it's the wrong term for me to keep using. Uh, 
it's just it's much more serialized pulp fiction than mm-hmm. than uh, initially it would look at uh, like then the summer I died looked like it was heading, you know, I don't know. See, I need an editor just to talk. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, I'm glad to hear that uh, you like where it went. That makes me, makes me feel a lot better. You guys, cause I, you two, I was like, okay, if they like it, I'll feel good. (laughs) I'm I'm not just going to run on air together. Um, You guys, is what you do you know you review things and you really delve into them and you're critical in a good way so to hear you say that uh you know you enjoy it makes me feel really good thanks good so <laughs> so when can uh audiences check it out like when do you think it will be available uh, i'm waiting to get back feedback from the beta readers and then based on that i really want to work as quickly as possible to make any changes that need to be made um, add in any little bits that are missing. Uh, you know, like you, you mentioned, you saw the notes in there. I've got to kind of add mm-hmm. that stuff in, um, which shouldn't take me too long. I had really wanted to have it out by the end of April, mm-hmm. um, but it's going to really depend on what people, what the beta readers think. And especially the ending is something I'm very concerned with because I there is another ending that I wrote. I wrote a completely different ending hmm. and I hate it. <laughs> and so I, I kept the ending that you guys got to read. And I'm really worried that people aren't going to want that, that they would want it to continue going further away from Summer mm-hmm. I Died. I can see that. And yeah, because you guys, I'm assuming you said you read the end or. You know, anyway. <laughs> well, was... I read the book. <laughs> no, 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 I didn't. I didn't skim it. I, I just I uh, the last 20 pages. Uh, it was hitting time constraints and I, I sped read. So. Yeah, oh, I know I'm not. Yeah, I wasn't like, funny. Oh yeah. And just flipping pages and checking out one word. Like, I guess it ended. <laughs> 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 but I don't know. It didn't say the end, <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm definitely going to have to go back and, and, uh, and read it a little more critically the last 20 pages, but yeah. Yeah. So yeah, well, hopefully people enjoy the end and want it, want to see where that goes. Um, but I'm really worried about it. So yeah, to get back to your question, hopefully at this point, May would be nice for it to to go out. And uh, you know, I don't know. Should, you think I should like kind of give a little elevator pitch about it to the audience, or do you guys yeah, want to like? Yeah, I'm not too afraid of spoiling it. I feel like I don't want to be too vague with just saying, you know. It's it's way out, it's such a departure and it's comic books and all this stuff. I feel like yeah, go ahead. If we gave yeah, him. go for it. Yeah, so uh, he's uh, in Berlin, um, where he has met up with the uh, James Peter Fountain, who was the man in the end of Born to Bleed, who sort of recruited him, and uh, finds out quickly in Berlin that he has been brought there to help catch, essentially a serial killer, and has. Uh, been given some uh, companions to sort of work with and they have to basically bump around Berlin and unravel the mystery of who this killer is. And then there's sort of a mystery within that mystery. Yeah. There's much more of a mystery vibe in this one than the others, especially like, which I think added to the pulp feel. Yeah. The fish out of water aspect really helped like the mystery, you know, him going to Berlin and mm-hmm. the fact that everyone, you know, when you're not from somewhere, everything could be a red herring or everything is a red herring, you know? So it's just like, who the hell is doing this? So anyway, <laughs> so yeah, it definitely worked well for for us. And uh, we really appreciate you coming on and, you know, sending us an advanced copy because. Uh, yeah. well, so anyway, um but yeah, thanks again. Oh, Brian, is there is there anything else you want to plug before we get out of here? Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's see. I've got a book called Habamak coming out from Thunderstorm Books. That's going to be a hardback limited edition. Nice. Uh, that will be out in the next two months. I want to say they they're sending me the gallery. What it, what right is now. it called again? It's called Habamak, uh, which is sort of a Native American demon spirit. Um, I, I took liberties with it 
a lot. <laughs> um, but it's a it's a very sort of throw. It's sort of my homage to the whole cabin in the woods genre mm-hmm. um, that I just I've always wanted to. Even though Summer I Died is largely a cabin in the woods type deal, this is much more of a sort of like Evil Dead, yeah. uh, evil entities, evil demons chasing some kids around, and that's just, I just I just wanted to write something fun. Um, they had asked for a novel, and I said, yeah, I just want I just want I want to do my take on that sort of cabin in the woods evil demon story so that's coming out they're doing also uh they're reprinting some of my novellas um they're going to do in a hardback limited edition as thunderstorm is yeah thunderstorm and let's see i got some new stuff i got just a short story coming out in an anthology called beasts um and i think that might be it i would check out there's a new antho out called kids i did the introduction to that but the stories in that are, are pretty fun about evil yeah, it's uh Stuart keen and matt hickman yes, were talking yeah. about that on our last episode yeah, yeah. yeah yep yep so check that out that's good like, i only did the intro but i did like the stories in it and i guess that's about it <laughs> just check out uh, check out my twitter feed at ryan c thomas and my website ryancthomas.com and all that stuff and i you know i post when i get a chance all right cool when are you guys when are you guys gonna do a review of sick <laughs> i don't know when don't we know. will but when we do you're more than invited <laughs> i want to i want to be in on that i gotta get my wife in on it too because it's like her <laughs> yeah that is a uh, hell of a movie <laughs> we're talking about sick Babe, she's wow, she's, she's sick, right? <laughs> All right, well, good to have you yeah, on again, and uh, we'll, we'll let you know. Right, <laughs> yeah, keep in touch, All right. man. All right, we will be right back with our review of the circle. And we're back with our review of Circle from 2015. Yeah, I kept saying the circle. So yeah. my bad, people that made it. circle. <laughs> my bad, Aaron Hahn and Mario Miscone, which I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that second guy's name. Yeah. Now, me and you haven't discussed this. Not but at all. Well, we much don't like... discuss anything that we ever talk about. <laughs> no, I know. But what I was going to say, we haven't discussed this. But I mean, you know, yeah, there's things to criticize about this. But I felt like this would be right in your wheelhouse. You are correct, sir. <laughs> you liked it? Oh, okay. oh yeah, it was great. <laughs> well, good, good because it. I, I watched this and was like, we should cover this because this is something Brian would love. And I, I feel like some of the time, not all the time, but some of the time that I recommend stuff to you, it's uh, <laughs> crap that you would hate. Yeah, <laughs> so. but you, you, you do it like half and half, or like a like some sort of ratio where you're like, okay, you'd really like this movie, and I actually do. Right, but then other ones I think are just spite, right? Oh yeah, things <laughs> and that I just say like, that you'd like, yeah. where you obviously will hate. Yeah, but see, it's at like such a such a you know ratio to it that I don't know which one I'm gonna get, mm-hmm. so I keep falling for it. Yeah. So <laughs> okay, so this movie is basically these people wake up in the middle, like in a room where they're all in a circle on little like pads like light up type pad thing like uh twister like yes. light up twister pads and if like you step circles <laughs> I mean, <it's... laughs> and if you step off you die yeah so um that's it that that's is... the entire plot of the movie well sort of uh after, or that's the exact that's the whole premise minutes. of the movie yeah well after about 10 minutes they uh, figure out that they can vote people to die. Oh yeah, we forgot to mention because that. Like the every room does kill people automatically yeah. at random every few minutes. Yeah. And, so, and then that's it. The rest of the movie is watching these. How many people start? Like forty. I think it was close to a hundred, wasn't it? No. No. Okay. Well, I don't many. know. I didn't but, count. Uh, fifty. Fifty strangers. Okay. <laughs> is, uh, that, is that what it like the synopsis started with 50 strings <laughs> yeah. but but so it was like 
there there's 50 people and so the rest of the movie is just watching them argue with each other deciding who's gonna die next yeah, <laughs> yeah. and that's it that's the yeah. whole movie so literally you're just <laughs> kind of watching it kind of reminds me of the election cycle this period because... that's exactly what i was thinking really like yeah because it's literally just like people tearing that entire room just tearing itself apart you know yeah and stereotypes because people are different yeah yeah and, and that's it and the cast is like a bunch of regular people and then just a bunch of stereotypes <laughs> am i right <laughs> about that? yeah, so, yeah. So you got like, the gang member, you got the hard nosed cop that's like, screw this guy, he's blah blah blah, you know, and yeah, and I don't know, like, but I don't know, I couldn't quit watching. I I really really thought that this was like minimal micro budget cinema done right. Yeah, I mean because like I don't I don't know who any of these people are. I recognized like one actress in the whole entire movie. Oh, it was uh, the woman from Dexter. Yeah. Julie, I forget her last name. Right. Anyway. That's the only person I recognized, right? Um, mm -hmm. But everybody, with the exception of maybe Julie Benz, Julie Benz. Um, the, with the exception of maybe like one or two people, like pulled this whole movie off, right? Because there's nothing that goes on. You know, the whole thing, because they can't move, right? And so they're all basically standing there in one spot for 90 minutes or whatever, you know, and the whole thing is just pulled off by their acting and yep. that's it. And it's not clear. I mean, until the very end, which we won't reveal what happens, but the entire time it's not clear. It's not even a question as much of like what's going on. It's just, who's going to die next. <laughs> Am yeah. I right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, and, and, and it's just watching people come to a consensus about who they're willing to kill yeah you know and it's like it's like a really racist version of 12 <laughs> angry men <laughs> i guess at, at parts i mean because they're just like deciding the fate of other people and it literally yeah, does but it's come not down all to, on race i know there's but, ageist but, parts too <laughs> yeah it starts off as ageist <laughs> and then it gets racist and then i don't know it's just nuts um because it's just like watching these people slowly come to terms with like who they're willing to get rid of in hopes that they might live. Yeah. You know, and it's messed up and it's really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, this, it, I could easily see where this would be polarizing as hell. This mm -hmm. film, like I could see getting on the other side and be like, nothing's happening, you know? Yeah. Um, Because I feel like, you know, I, I'm quick to jump on devil's advocate uh, on a lot of things, you know, and mm -hmm. so I can understand that viewpoint. But on the flip side, as far as what I'm into, I really, A, I love micro budget cinema done right. Like, mm -hmm. absolutely love it. The lower the budget uh, impresses me more whenever a film, like, let's say a movie cost five million versus five grand. And they're the same enjoyability factor. <laughs> like, like I find the five thousand dollar one much more impressive. And so, anyway, it definitely was in my wheelhouse, and I was so so impressed with this. And I don't know. I, I feel like it didn't really get a whole lot of press or anything like that. I hadn't really heard of this. Uh, I believe in Reddit once someone was like, you know, hey, have y'all seen the circle? And that's about <laughs> it. That's about all I'd seen of it. And so <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean it's really, really cool. Now, did you watch it on Netflix, Brian? I did. Yeah. It's it's actually been on my recommended since it hit Netflix. Yeah. And I keep seeing it. And I was and like whenever you're like, hey, let's watch Circle, and I was like, okay. And then I looked it up on Netflix and I was like, oh, it's that movie. Because like it's it's been on like my to watch list. Um, just because, you know, like like you said, this is right up my alley too. And I didn't know it was this one. Now, did you so. find yourself in the middle of the thing voting in your head about who should die next? No. Really? <laughs> yeah. Did you? Oh yeah. I was like, they should kill that guy. He hadn't even talked, <laughs> you know. 
Like he hadn't even tried to explain his side. The the other thing that I found interesting about this film is like the people that would talk would like they would state their case. This happened multiple times. They'd state their case and everyone would be like, you're right. Yeah. Th this other person should die. And then after a few minutes of them talking, they would slip up and then everyone just turn on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was, it was such like a, um, I guess, commentary on just mob mentality, mm -hmm. you know, and going against the group. Cause it was like, they even split into factions and stuff and it's like whoever was against the group was gonna be next and it was just it was nuts it was just like watching society devolve just really? like on a small scale no 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 i agree but really you didn't have opinions about who should live and die next no really i did the entire <laughs> film is about that you, you weren't rooting for one person no huh the, the i will say the final three were not two of the final three were people were that I would, yeah. yeah, not surprising, and the people that should have been saved. Yeah, like in my <laughs> opinion, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe somebody's like save the gang member. <laughs> well, technically, isn't anybody's life just as valid? Uh, Brian, we're 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 just <laughs> we're talking in circles. Oh uh, God! You see what I'm saying? But no, I I think the one that has the most life left to live was what I was going Spoilers, by. Spoilers, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but yeah, no. Um, so if you were to give this a rating, one out of five, uh, one to five, four. you'd go four. four. I'd mm -hmm. say yeah, four. Right at four, maybe three and a half. Um. But definitely worth your uh, time and stuff if you are a Netflix subscriber. So, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, we really can't get much else into it without giving away... Well, a lot of things are just talking about specific parts. Because, like like we said, there is no... Like, there's a premise to this movie, mm -hmm. right? And then that's it. But it's really, really well done. Yeah. So, okay. Let's just say, uh, you know, just trying to put this hypothetical out there. You wake up in that room. <laughs> what do you do, Brian? I'd probably be the guy that doesn't vote. <laughs> just the silent guy hoping. Yeah. yeah, that's a good strategy. I think I would just hop off and blow up or something because <laughs> obviously I wasn't going to be the last but, person. But see, here's the thing, though. You you hop off, but with like a flying like clothesline where you just take down like six other people with you. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Why wouldn't anyone <laughs> trying to push off other people? Well, it, when you touched other people, you got shocked. Oh, yeah. yeah, you, yeah, couldn't, yeah. you couldn't touch other people. So if you're already like leaping off, your momentum's going to carry and you're going to knock over a whole bunch of other people. Yeah. That's, I will that's say, the way to do it. <laughs> I will say that uh I figured that they were going to like speak volumes about like make some sort of social stand where the people weren't like people that were perceived as stereotypes weren't actually yeah. and like the gang member the I keep saying gang member but he just had a bunch of gang tattoos. Um and <laughs> I, I figured he would be like, you know, yeah, he was a I'm mechanic. a preacher or something, <laughs> you know, but no. I think what that says, though, is like it's it's a it's a comment on how quick you are to judge people. And then once you make that snap judgment, it's you know, it's over. You know, you don't care about what they have to say or anything like that. And you're just like, meh. Exactly. But what I'm saying, done. what you I was were thinking it was going to do the turnaround yeah where they actually yeah. commit to that vision yeah like commit to that commentary and you know because this was much more realistic though where, where the people were just kill them yeah <laughs> i guess yeah especially like during this election cycle you're seeing a lot of just crazy <laughs> bad shit <laughs> but the other thing that struck me was like how callous they got about uh -huh. like um, they made a list of people 
you know, they were like, okay, this guy first and then them and then them and then them and then them. And then they just held on a conversation. And whenever it came time to vote, they didn't even break conversation. They just all voted for the next person to die, you know? <laughs> and it's just like, they're just trying to figure this stuff out. And then do you, do, do, you know, in the middle of everything, it, yeah. it was, it was nuts. I didn't quite understand the voting process. <laughs> Did, like it, it how it happened. Clear. It wasn't very clear. And it was also invisible. <laughs> yeah like so, so basically you'd lock in your vote with some sort of like power glove technology yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i i remember rad racer and how easy it was to screw up so yeah. i would want something much more just like you and just point at everybody <laughs> but see but then it keeps the anonymity and so it's like all the people um wow call back to earlier who are just racist on the internet <laughs> because huh. they have that layer of anonymity. Right. And so if you don't have to show who you're voting for, then you're going to be more likely to make that choice. Yeah. And maybe we've kind of led this down the wrong path. This wasn't really like just like some sort of like racist commentary. Like the whole movie wasn't, it's just, that was one of the things in the pantheon yep. and trying to determine like a lot of these people would use racism, like old people died first. <laughs> and, and then like, to you know, some people were like, you know, this, this child should live. And some people were like, well, the child should die. <laughs> you know, or, or <laughs> what like, is your value to society? Yeah. Stuff like that. I mean, there was a whole slew of, you know, criteria for picking people but race showed up a few times. <laughs> yeah, it definitely did. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I don't know. I I really, really thought the movie was kind of cool. And I like the fact, I won't get into it, but I like that the ending was what it was. I, I did too, but I also had another way I thought it was going to go. Where that, the last person was the only person that died? No. See, that's what I thought about that thinking. too, but I thought about I thought about something. Can I can I tell you my idea? Yeah. Okay. So I thought it was gonna come down to the last person, right? And then they were gonna load 49 new people in it. That would be cool. <laughs> because or because the first the there was a dude at the very beginning mm -hmm. who seemed like he knew what was going on. Yeah. But right? And but no, he was like, hey, you got to do this and everything. And he's like, don't move and all, the, all this other stuff. And it was probably just because he was the first guy that woke up. But he seemed like he knew what was happening. And so like in my head, I was like, oh, if they're just going to load 49 other people, then that first guy at the beginning was the winner of the last round. It was good stuff. I, I really liked it. Yeah. D uh, see, your ending, there's this movie called... What was it? Because I always try to make the worst ending possible. Oh, I I agree. <laughs> I think every movie should be a tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> Dumb and dumber. <laughs> um, they just freeze to death on the moped. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, there was a movie. I forget what it was called. House of Thirteen or something. I can't remember. It had Dennis Hopper in it, if I'm remembering right. But anyway, um, it was I'm thinking of the Easy Rider. <laughs> yes i'm always just thinking of easy rider no like so it was this film where like these people woke, wake up in a house and it all the only instruction was the last one gets a million dollars and so they were like what the last one what and so then they'd like increase <laughs> they'd increase like the temperature and stuff like it just kept getting hotter and more like pissed off and Mm -hmm. There wasn't any food and people started turning and like after somebody finally kills somebody and finally, like that's just something that happens when people yeah. are mad. <laughs> like but, you do. <laughs> so <laughs> hot outside and you're hungry. Yeah. So when somebody finally kills somebody, um, uh, the temperature decreases and then like a big feast slides in the door and they're nice. like, and so anyway, Spoiler alert for that movie, whatever it's called. I think it's called House of 13. <laughs> anyway, um, so the guy, the guy leaves and uh, wins this competition. And 
the room opens up. There's a million dollars on the floor. He grabs it like in a duffel bag, walks down this hall into this other house, opens the door, and it's just a bunch of people like the exact same situation, but they all have duffel bags full of money. And, and then it's like last one gets it all. I, that's just where it ended. Oh, so, that's yeah. Good. yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, you should have watched that film. <laughs> you like that ending. Uh, but yeah. So anyway, um, I guess I'm pretty good with this. You? Yeah. All right. I'm done. <laughs> Yikes. We didn't commit to what we were going to watch and stuff next episode. Uh, I know the book. What book? What is it? Aren't we? Are we going to do Kit Powers God Bomb? We sure are. And what film are we going to do? I don't know. Are you looking up stuff on Netflix right now? <laughs> yeah. Why don't you keep talking? <laughs> <laughs> well, why we, while we figure that out, I guess uh, you can go check us out on social media, right? On Twitter, we're at b Pod. Also on Facebook, at b and Pod. Um, you can find us on the web at b and <laughs> There's a lot of repetition there. Um, or you can email us at podcast at bmoviesandebooks.com. Oh, you know what? We forgot to say um, about the March Mad Men tournament. All right. Talk, tell them a little bit about that. Uh, we're basically doing a bracket of March Madness, but it's all um, killers and monsters from horror movies. So the first one's up right now. We're doing one every day um, until we run out. So the first one is Freddy versus Candyman <laughs> um, is how it got lined up, uh, which I, I tweeted out the man of your dreams, right? Versus uh, I forgot what I called Candyman. Man man sweet. No, no. Uh, like the sweetest guy in town, I think is what I called him. <laughs> wow, Brian. <laughs> yeah. It's just a big softy. <laughs> but uh, they're Twitter polls, so they're only going to run a day, right? Mm -hmm. And so then at the end of whatever it is, is 13 days or whatever, then it'll be over and we'll have a winner of this year's inaugural March Mad Men. All so right. something that we're probably going to do every year, maybe. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> All right. Well, make sure to leave us a five star review on iTunes. Uh, subscribe to the B and E Master Feed, where new episodes of new shows might be dropping. Everything soon. will be showing. Yeah. And um, that is it. We will see you did, next week. Whenever. Wait. We did you did you find a movie? Yeah. We'll see you next week when we cover God Bomb by Kit Power and Final Girl. It's about oh. a group of sociopaths yeah. who've been killing girls in the woods for sport. I've, That's I've a wanted to see that. A teen who turns out to be a trained assassin. You now you know that there's another one, Final Girls, different. Oh, type. I did not know. This is the one with Abigail Breslin. Uh, but yeah, so join us next week, and we will see you then.